This is the Dick B. Channel on YouTube, covering the history of Alcoholics Anonymous and the Christian recovery movement. My name is Dick B., and I'm an active, recovered member of the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. This is video 15 of the Dick B. Channel on YouTube. It is part of a series showing ways in which key Christian and Christian organizations, active while AA co-founders Bill W. and Dr. Bob received their Christian upbringings, influenced the AA Fellowship founded in 1935. This video deals with the impact on Dr. Bob's Christian upbringing made by one of the great Christian evangelists, F. B. Meyer. As we emphasize, and we emphasize three topics. One, remarks on the Christian roots of AA by Dr. Bob. Two, comments by Bill W. and others on prayer and medication called quiet time in early AA. Three, the important historical quiet time contributions of evangelist F. B. Meyer. The remarks of pioneer AAs relevant to the Christian roots of AA. Dr. Bob said, I had refreshed my memory of the good book and I had had excellent training in that as a youngster. The AA General Service Conference approved book, Dr. Bob and the Good Old Timers, states on page 71, for the next three months after Bill met Bob in May of 1935 and moved into the home of Dr. Bob and his wife Ann, I, that's Bill W., lived with these two wonderful people. Bill said, I shall always believe they gave me more than I ever brought them. Each morning there was a devotion, he recalled. After a long silence in which they awaited inspiration and guidance, Anne would read from the Bible. As his words were summarized by A.D. Lament of the Youngstown, Ohio Vindicator, Dr. Bob said in a lead, a talk he gave in Youngstown, Ohio, members of Alcoholics Anonymous begin the day with a prayer for strength and a short period of Bible reading. Quiet time and the biblical roots and their vital role in early AA. In discussing the interesting implications of Frank Amos's February 1938 report to John D. Rockefeller Jr. about the Akron AA program at that time, Dr. Bob and the Good Old Timers states on page 136, morning devotion and quiet time were musts. Concerning quiet time, Dr. Bob and the Good Old Timers states further on page 150, morning quiet time continued to be an important part of the recovery program in 1938 to 1939, as did the spiritual reading from which the early AA's members derived a good deal of their inspiration. Psalm 5.3 states, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. Dr. Bob and the Good Old Timers quotes Bill W. on page 178 as follows. They, that's Wally and Annabelle G. and four alcoholics staying with them, would start out in the morning reading from the upper room and say the prayers. I always sort of felt that something was lost from AA when we stopped emphasizing the morning meditation. Dr. Bob and the Good Old Timers describes Dr. Bob's own morning devotion on page 314. Prayer, of course, was an important part of Dr. Bob's faith. According to Paul S., Dr. Bob's morning devotion consisted of a short prayer, a 20-minute study of a familiar verse from the Bible, and a quiet period of waiting for directions as to where he that day should find use for his talent. Having heard, he would religiously go about his father's business, as he put it. Henrietta D., the wife of AA No. 3, Bill D., wrote the following in a letter to Bill Wilson. Anne, that's Dr. Bob's wife, taught me to have a quiet time in the morning that I might feel near to God and receive strength for the day. In talking about the quiet times, Bill Wilson, Dr. Bob, and Bob Smith's wife, Ann, were holding over the summer of 1935. Dr. Bob's daughter, Sue Smith Window, stated, 
At that time, I was getting involved in quiet times they had in the morning. The guys would come, and Mom would have her quiet time with them. They'd have their quiet time, which is a holdover from the Oxford group, where they read the Bible, prayed and listened, and got guidance. Specific Contributions of Evangelist F. B. Meyer to Early AA's Quiet Time Francis Brotherton Meyer was born in Clapham, London on April 8, 1847. Meyer had a close, lifelong friendship with the American evangelist Wydell Moody, working with him in England and America. In speaking on the great social reformers of the Keswick Victorian era, Billy Graham mentioned both General William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army, and Meyer. Meyer took the position that, for ex-prisoners, alcoholics, and delinquents, conversion to God through Jesus Christ was necessary but not always sufficient. Often, he asserted, they also needed jobs and accommodation. George Williams, a trustee at Myers Christ Church, himself a leading evangelist who played a large part in founding the YMCA, was involved in Myers' work at Newman Hall. Meyer preached both the need to find salvation through Christ and to give up alcohol. Christian Endeavor, the society in which Dr. Bob was active, was close to Meyer's heart. And in 1894, Meyer became the first president of the Central South London Christian Endeavor Union. His evangelism revol resulted in many conversions. In 1892, he made his first trip to the USA and was eventually to go there at least 20 times. In 1898, he went to Washington, opened the Senate with prayers, and had a talk with President McKinley. Frank Bookman, who founded the Oxford Group, first attended Northfield conventions and heard Meyer speak. Meyer later came to the campus of Pennsylvania State College, where he told Bookman to listen more to God and to work more personally than to organize large meetings. Bookman was much influenced by Meyer's books, especially his title, The Secret of Guidance. Bookman was especially struck by the words, quote, if any man wills to do his will, he shall know. I published my book, Good Morning, Quiet Time, Morning Watch, Meditation, and Early AA in 1998 in order to give the recovery community an authentic view of the origins, practices, and viewpoints of what early AA is called Quiet Time. The title of this book was chosen because the title of Reverend Sam Shoemaker's first radio program was Good Morning. There, Shoemaker told his listeners how he has set aside the first portion of his day for time with God. With his family, he reached for the, his Bible. He read a chapter or two. Then they got quiet and spent some time in prayer. In quietness, he said, they prayed for the people, the causes, the immediate problems of the day and asked God to direct them. He suggested that if his listeners began the day that way, they would have a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, and a good life. Shoemaker was a strong advocate of what was originally called the morning watch. It later became, came to be known as quiet time. According to Bill Wilson, Shoemaker's teaching on this and most of the other 12-step ideas were the direct source of influence on Bill's writing. Actually, in Dr. Bob's Christian Endeavor Society, the meditation practice was called Quiet Hour. In the YMCA, it was known as the Morning Watch. In the Oxford Group, it became known as Quiet Time. And as Bill Wilson spoke of it in his big book, as Prayer and Meditation. However much F.B. Meyer influenced the men and organizations that shaped early AA, Meyer certainly crossed their paths. The paths of Moody and Sankey, the YMCA, the Salvation Army, and the Young People's Society of Christian Endeavor. And in 1896, he gathered and pulled together the ideas he had formulated on God's guidance. He published 
the secret of guidance. Here are some of the major points he made. One, the biblical foundations are found in Psalm 32, 8. Quote, I will instruct thee and teach thee. Proverbs 3, 6. Quote, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord shall guide thee continually. And John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Number two. Surrendering to the will of the Father, as seen in John 5.20. I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Number three, it's for us ultimately to decide, as God shall teach us, but the voice may come to us through the voice of a sanctified common sense. Number four, we must be much in prayer for guidance. James 1 says, quote, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not. Meyer presented in one short chapter many ideas you can find in the ideas and even the language of AA's big book on asking for direction. Video 15 has focused on how the idea of looking to God for guidance came to AA founders from some Christian evangelist heavyweights. The next video will cover the healing work of evangelists of importance. One is an evangelist of Dr. Bob Akron days, Ethel Willits. We will provide you with further information on how the deeds of the evangelists with their conversions, Bibles, prayer meetings, pleas to God for guidance, healings, revivals, and gospel meetings found their way into the ideas, principles, and practices of the Old School Akron AA Christian Fellowship Program. I close by giving you two pictures of two of my books, which more fully detail the facts about the progression of the Christian roots of AA into the actual program of the Old School Akron AA Christian Fellowship Program. The first is Good Morning, Quiet Time, Morning Watch, Meditation, and Early AA. The second is Bob Holman, F.B. Meyer, quote, if I had a hundred men, unquote. Great Britain, Christian Focus Publications Limited, 2007.